Well, now to some breaking news from the southern border and the child trafficking story that we've been covering here extensively on the show. Illegal immigrant children being kept in concentration camps in America. This is a phrase that I never thought would come out of my mouth. Uh, That's right. These children with no parents, not allowed to go outside. All of this happening while the Biden administration, the Governor Greg Abbott administration, ignoring the situation. Our next guest spoke to a whistleblower at a secret child concentration camp facility in Texas and joins us now. Welcome back to journalist Michael Yan and Ann Vandersteel, host of Right Now with Ann Vandersteel. And Ann, welcome to the show for the first time. Good to see both of you. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you, Clayton. The things that we've been seeing are over the top. For instance, uh, two nights ago, Ann and I and the rest of our team were out with a, a whistleblower who used to work in these facilities, and he also served as an escort. So they actually take these children and fly them around the United States, such as to New York and many to Florida. And often, interestingly, many of the escorts are 19, 20, 21 years old, and they're staying with children up to five, even 10 children. When it's five children, it's often just one escort, like a young man with teenage girls or boys, that sort of thing. And sometimes they stay overnight in hotels together when their flights are are, uh, delayed or whatever. And often they're delivering these to home, these children, of mixed race. So it's not like somebody, it's like, you know, it'll be boys and girls sometimes from different countries that are being delivered to affluent homes in places like Florida. And so this is very interesting. We're all over this. We're looking into it deeply. In fact, we're going to head to Florida soon and look more deeply into it. But Anne saw a lot of things that I didn't see as well. You know, the part that was so yeah, tell me what you saw. Sorry. Well, you've been over the past few days at a, at a Walmart facility speaking with these whistleblowers. We have images here and videos that you guys have sent. There's sort of a checkpoint. You pull up to an, an old Walmart and there's a checkpoint to even get onto the premises. Just tell me what you saw, Anne. Well, what's so frankly deeply disturbing on all of this is the fact that you have corporations like Walmart that are now turning their closed facilities. Remember, we lost a lot of businesses during COVID and and most of the ones that survived were the Walmarts and the Home Depots. But in fact, Walmarts did close uh, all over the country and they're being rehabbed into these facilities that house up to 5,000 migrant children in one building. So you can imagine the conditions where they're not even allowed outside and you have the parking lot cordoned off uh, right there in the open where other businesses and retail pads are still open and people know what's going on in the community. They're aware that they're holding all these migrant children. You have security that when you pull up and you pull out cameras, walkie talkies and security guards appear everywhere and start to surround you to make sure you're not videotaping these facilities, which are right out in the open. Southwest Key Programs is one of the non-governmental organizations that I've been tracking for about three years now. And they are known to not only be paid publicly by the government hundreds of of millions of dollars per year, but they're also taking that money and financing the coyote cartels to smuggle these children in. And they prefer the younger, the better, because they get more money per child, the younger the child is. They're also funding the lobbyists, which are then, of course, greasing the politicians to encourage the policies and laws that it, that are delivering the open border nightmare that we are witnessing today. It's changing the face of our country. It's burdening the taxpayer. Crime is through the roof. And frankly, Governor Abbott shut the border during COVID, Clayton. He could shut the border right now. Instead, he's visiting with the mayor of McAllen, Texas, having big uh, you know, summits down here in McAllen, Texas, congratulating McAllen for their tax revenue growth in the retail sector. And they're encouraging paving over agriculture so that they can expand the international bridge into Mexico and bring in the fruits and vegetables from Mexico over and above the Made in USA label. So all of this World Economic Forum agenda is playing out right here on the southern border. And Texas is going to lose their electoral college if this progression changes. But again, frankly, it's at the expense of the children, which is the real profit center for these NGOs and frankly, for the federal government becoming the largest human uh, trafficking purveyors in the world. I know when we say that, right, we say the United States government is the largest purveyor of human trafficking in the world. We certainly know the uh, accusations leveled against the CIA as being actively involved in this. And here you have these facilities hosting 5,000 children in old Walmarts with guards and guard gates. I'm looking at this Welcome to the South Key Programs guard gate that when you pull up, they're watching you. This is unbelievable that this is happening in America. What is the response from the Biden administration when and when you bring this to, you know, Secretary Mayorkas or any other member of the Biden administration? <laughs> You know, I'm glad you brought up Secretary Mayorkas, Clayton, because uh, a team of uh, researchers has done a deep dive led by an attorney 
Todd Callender, who's actually got a case in front of the Tenth Circuit, taking it to the Supreme Court, questioning the validity of these vaccines and what it does to your uh, your sovereignty based on the Thirteenth Amendment. Setting that aside, this team has uncovered the fact that Secretary Mayorkas and every member of the Biden administration, including Kamala Harris, including federal judges, including uh, U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves, all have deficient, defective, or non-existent oaths of office on file. What do I mean by that? When you swear to, t- to uphold and, and defend the Constitution, you have to do two pro- two-part process. One is 5 U.S.C. 3331, where you put your hand on the Bible and raise your right hand and swear to uphold the Constitution. And part two is 5 U.S.C. 3332, where it must be presented in a written format, notarized and kept on file within 30 days of taking public office. These people are deficient, defective, or non-existent when it comes to that second part of the oath, which then begs the question, to whom do they really have an allegiance? Are they even up for treason based on the activities they're engaging with this open border policy? And of course, just the abuse of these children is is unfathomable what's going on right now. Yeah, treason. That's a, that's a great point, Ann. Uh, Michael, when you talk about what's happening with these children and the travesty that's unfolding, you talked about where these children are being shipped to. They're being housed here. What is the what is the um, the facility then that's moving these children from these these abandoned WalMarts to homes in New York and across the country? Who's doing this? Well, for instance, a whistleblower who who would probably go on your show. Actually, we can ask him today. He was one of the escorts for several years. His name is Carlos, and uh, and I think he would actually. And he was one of the escorts. They'll take him to. McAllen Airport, which is just down the road from us here, or Harlingen Airport here in Texas. And they would fly them to like Jacksonville or Orlando Airport, as an example. And then take, then they rent a car. Well, if, they, if their flights get uh, delayed somewhere in between, they would get a hotel with no, no oversight whatsoever, staying in the same room. He was instructed they were to stay on the couch and the children would stay in the bed, up to five children. It could be up to 10, but in those cases, they would have uh, two escorts. And at times uh, they would actually lose children at times, mm-hmm. like gone, and uh, nobody knows what happened to them. Oh yeah, and then so they deliver them to homes, right? They deliver them to homes in, in affluent areas. I I ask, and Ann and I ask. We, we must have interviewed him for ten hours between the yeah. two days, right? And 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 we said, you know, do they deliver them to RV parks or to boat ramps or to um, trailer parks or what? And he said affluent homes. It was always affluent homes. Sometimes when they delivered. Sometimes the, the sponsors or whatever they are, we don't know how that works, would pick them up at baggage claim at airports. Sometimes they would not show up at all. And the company warned the escorts never to bring the children back. It doesn't matter if, they're, if, the, if the recipients of the children are drunk or high or angry. And many times uh, Carlos would tell us that the children were fearful. They wanted to go back to their home countries and back to their parents, which begs the question, how did you get here? Of course, which we see in Dairy and Gap, and we see in, when I'm down in Mexico, we see children who clear. Anne and I saw on the border what three days ago. Yep. Children, you know, you're a mother, you know, seeing children, the body language just didn't match with. I should let you talk on that. Yeah, no. Uh, when you see young men, young adult males, chaperoning children by having their hands on the backs of their shoulders and steering the child into the bus that Customs and Border Protection has waiting for them as facilitated by another company, ISS Action, partnering with Catholic Charities, which, by the way, is all over this down here in McAllen. We visited that facility and we saw Customs and Border Protection agents really uh, bro hugging, glad handing, high fiving each other as the quotes merchandise, which is the illegals, mostly women and small children are lined up against the wall waiting to go inside to the Catholic Charities facility, which, by the way, encompasses a whole city square block on uh, downtown McAllen, and it's right across from a bus station where they then move the people across the street, put them on buses. And as you know, Abbott is pushing these people all over the country. But Clayton, it gets even more concerning because we have multi-drug resistant tuberculosis uh, coming in with this migrant flow. And that multi-resistant, uh, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis is zoonotic and it jumps from people to animal and animal to people. So cows by the thousands, tens of thousands are being slaughtered in Texas because migrant workers working on dairy farms or cattle farms are spreading tuberculosis to these cattle, which immediately have to be exterminated. You cannot have that. So Texas and right now, Clayton, is at risk of losing its TB free status which is going to impact our food supply. And my beef supplier that is the sponsor for my show is warning me, Ann, 
Beef prices are going to skyrocket 30% in October. And we see this because the dairy and the, and, the, and the beef cattle industry is being decimated by TB all over the country with these migrants. So we have a fifth generation warfare that is being implemented thanks to the World Economic Forum's puppets like Joe Biden and Greg Abbott, which are allowing this to continue. And it just simply can be stopped if they shut the border and they're not doing it. Yeah, it's all part of the plan. This is all part of the WEF plan, right, to eliminate our dependency on meat or our, our, our eating of meat and move to this uh, meatless future that they want. And they can do it under this this hidden cloud of tuberculosis, I suppose. I want to get you guys can both answer this question or you can help me navigate this. And you've been investigating the Southwest Key programs for three years now. If I'm a wealthy person in Florida, uh a friend of Jeffrey Epstein or something, and I want one of these children, what is the mechanism by which I submit a request? Do I get it? There's got to, what I'm getting at is there's got to be a paper trail here, right? Someone yeah. submits a request. They say, I'd like a child. I'd like a woman shipped to me. It comes into this facility. Carlos or other carriers deliver this child to my front door. I mean, how does this happen? So that's an excellent question. In fact, we're looking into that right now because the way the organization, the, the NGOs are set up, you have somewhere between five and 10 critical people at the very top that own the organization, whether it's SLS, um, MBM, Southwest Key Properties, or any of the other big 10 NGOs that are in the country that are hosting tens of thousands of children, all or actually hundreds of thousands of children countrywide. But they subcontract every aspect of managing these migrants, whether it's food, they have a subcontractor, medical support, educational support, housing support. They have different organizations underneath them. This gives them that arms, arms length, um, you know, sort of uh, safety between anything that can go wrong down in the field. So it, when it comes to the paper trail of how does a child get tracked from Southwest Key Properties into, say, somebody's house, is it an Epstein connection? That is what we're trying to figure out right now, which is why working with Carlos is critical. He has, believe it or not, and this is a saving grace, this is why this whistleblower is so explosive and why it's gonna be so critical to unpacking all this and shutting it all down and forcing Congress to defund these NGOs and to put pressure on to close them countrywide, every single, you know, every single uh, Walmart and whatever they're being housed and needs to be shut down. He has the names of children from flight, ro flight logs where he took them. He has the names of children where he's been told, go to this address in Florida and deliver the child in Florida or upstate New York two areas that were sort of the hotbeds for where these children, and again, you look at Florida, New York, where did Epstein have a lot of uh, connections? Florida, New York, where did Nexium have a lot of connections? Florida, New York. So it's the same pattern, it's the same people. It's just a matter of now finding the next whistleblower that's connected to one of these sub NGOs that will show us that paper trail because we aren't there yet. We have delivery to a receiving uh, quote sponsor but we don't have how that request came in. L rest assured, Clayton, we're gonna get that because we're getting this close now. We understand how the operations are coming together. And Michael and I are meeting with members of Congress in the next couple of days to put that pressure on and to really engage media, alt alt new media, alternative media, and hopefully even the lamestream fake news will finally jump on this because the jig's up. And those people are gonna have to start speaking about what's really going on. We're gonna force their hand on all this, Clayton. So. Thanks for at least giving us the platform you built. I love it. I mean, the work that you guys are doing is is second to none, and we need more human beings like you in this world. What you but what you both are doing uh, is astonishing. Michael, have you seen any of these children? I know you've been on the hunt. We've av you've certainly shared with us videos over the past few months of tents and baby bottles and uh, and all of the all of the accoutrements that are being used to shuttle these children across. These facilities are locked down and blocked. Uh, have you have you witnessed children coming outside, or have you seen any of that? Now we see children crossing the border. We just saw that the other night or drone the other footage. day. We have the drone footage. Uh, yeah, I was going to mention and some drone footage, which was by one of our sources that we were just out with. He just made forty eight hours ago or so, uh, and there appeared to be girls uh, out at one of the facilities. The one at the Walmart or former Walmart, whatever it is, who owns the property. We'll find out, but uh, but there's another facility, that's for boys, right? There's another facility for girls, uh, and that one we have drone footage of, which I can send to you, and you can see uh, children walking outside. And in fact, 
uh, you can you could measure their height with the right technology, which exists. It's easy to do. Michael, I got to ask you, how in the hell is this happening? Where this isn't illegal. I mean, someone could, you know, a nine one one call to say there are five thousand kids in this facility. Under what law are they allowed to be there and be protected? We were talking about that last night. What the hell? uh, Let's let's. Clayton, what what judicial system? Where do we adjudicate anything that we know is wrong? Look at all the evidence we have of election tampering and theft. And where do we where are we getting help? They're you know they're now going to try and arrest Sidney Powell for what they claim to be uh, election tampering. It, it, this is they're projecting their crimes on those that are exposing their crimes. So this, I mean, I don't even know where you go. We don't have a Department of Justice. We don't even have a court system where you can get a fair shake at this. It's going to be the people tactical civics, frankly, Clayton, and the people standing up the law all over again, like our constitution demands with our civic duty. We have to get back to the basics here. That's where we are. Clayton, these children are literally held in custody. They are not allowed at that Walmart, for instance, or former Walmart. They're not allowed to go outside. Occasionally, Carlos says, a a few very good boys can walk across the street to the McDonald's. I sent you the map. So you can see where this is at. This is in Brownsville, Texas. Everybody in Brownsville will know where that Walmart is. You can drive to it right now and go look, and you'll see when you try to get inside, they're going to come up on the golf carts. The guards are, they're very aggressive. They're going to be on their walkie talkies and that sort of thing, sort of blocking you from any access. Yeah, it's amazing. This is right in front of everybody. And, you know, what does it take just a SWAT team to go in there and arrest everybody involved? This is clear kidnapping, right? Yeah. And it's happening right downtown Brownsville. Well, yeah, to your point, Anne, you need a justice department that would actually take this seriously. Um, instead, of course, they're more more interested in going after Donald Trump right now on January 6th. Thank you both for what you're doing. I'll let you get back to it. And uh, we'd love to be able to check back in with you as this investigation unfolds further. And we would love to speak with Carlos here on the show. If, if he's amenable to that, we'd love to talk with a whistleblower specifically on that issue. So thank you guys for what you're doing. Michael and Ann, uh, again, we need more people like you in this world doing the work that you're doing. Thank you, Clayton. Very much. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.